Hello again, my beautiful people. I got another good build today, and uh, although we're not installing the part, we're going to make it so this holster is compatible with it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it is a tactical extensions adapter. There's a few out there. They're called a few different things, but what it is is it mounts to the Safari Land blocking or whatever blocking you have, uh, as long as it's compatible with these four holes, and it wraps around the holster and allows you to mount a tourniquet or mag holder to your um, existing QLS system, um, or like I said, if it's blocked for it, you can use it. Uh, the reason why I don't offer these is this particular mount in my opinion, is too small. It hits the uh, sight channel. You have to move the Safari Land 3 hole uh, further over and it misses with the uh, sight channel, but uh, it is requested that um, it's able to fit one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit it on there, uh, which means we just have to move the uh, blocking, this guy right here, over towards the sight channel a little bit so we have enough room to mount this and we're just going to make sure it gets done so what we're building is an fn 510 or 545 with the surefire x300 ultra and it's going to be level two with qls and the wrs hood um, i prefer this hood over the other ones that i offer it is more sturdy and stronger the only drawback is you have to push it towards your body which means we're going to have to gusset this as well to make it a lot stronger so uh Let's go for a ride. Let's build this holster and get it up. Oh, as you can see, I got some of my stuff right here. I got the blocking that we need. And um, so yeah, let's go with this. We know that our sight channel is gonna be in the center of this once it's folded. So we know that this has to go over that sight channel and having this way over here is going to be the only way to do that so and sadly this is how it's going to have to be if we want it to sit on that now with the setup you can obviously do any of that um, but we're going to do it so it sits flash flush like that and just make sure it fits so this pretty much as it sits right there is where it's going to have to be it's going to clear everything uh you know it's about an inch over what i normally do i would normally put it here but we're going to have to go well, maybe not an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Uh, let's see. So this clears right about there. And we're going to call it right there. And we're going to build it off of that. So that's going to sit there. It's got to clear the RMR, which that does. And then our hood's going to be sitting right about there. And we'll obviously, it's going to be braced in there with a pretty thick clear that I have. I have 0 0.093 here. Um, so let's go ahead. We know that sits right there. So let's go ahead and block this real quick. That's just gonna go right there. And a small piece of blocking underneath it. That is too skinny. I'm gonna have a small piece of aluminum. Here we go, we'll do that. So let's line this back up. And the reason why we're going longer than it needs to be is that extra ridge, which is going to give us a little bit more sturdiness, even though this is gonna be braced. So we're gonna throw that right there and that's long enough to clear what we need it to clear as you could hear if you can't hear the relays clicking the uh, ovens are on which is what we want nice hot foam on the oven itself because obviously this is not uh, foam press this is going to be vacuum pressed which yeah I know the last few videos have been vacuum pressed but you get to see different styles so all right and like i said uh this is wide enough to clear bing bing should be the bottom one worries me so let's move it out just a little bit because it's not you can see this and this plane aren't parallel if you can't see that right there aren't parallel so that's going to be out just a little bit and that's usually to clear the optic and I think that's going to be resting right on it, so we might have to go out just a little bit more. Yeah, I'm happy with that right there. But we'll go up just a hair, and then lock that in place. So it's going to mess with the sight channel just a little bit, but it is what it is. We know it's going to do that. And, yeah. make sure you're able to 
remove your blocking after the fact because I find myself sometimes having to heat up. Oh, so you got a little bit of a dip. Put my hand up on your hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Which means I'm going to throw a small piece of blocking in there. There you go. So this is the furthest over that I've ever done this because the holster is going to stick out to, you know, this line right here. And we're going to have the fork. Let's open it here. Fork's going to ride right here. So it's going to be in line with it. So, you know, it's going to be a little offset. I personally like to put it in the center, but uh, it is what it is. So let's just get this all taped up. to stick something underneath that. Happy with that. And that's for the drill hole indicators. And then we're going to move to this side and get that all set. So we'll throw that right there. so we don't get Kydex underneath it, because once we do that, it is a royal pain in the butt to remove it. All right, this is ready. This is just gonna be in black, so go ahead, cut the piece of black, and get going. Right hand, not modified threaded barrel, X300 Ultra, yep, we're good to go. And we're out of the press, and as you can see, right there, see how much it leans over, but what I did is, you know, it did some tenting because of the tape. So while it was in there, I pushed it. I forgot to hit record, my bad. But we're gonna, we have a nice flat surface to do that bend, so it shouldn't really mess it up that much. Um, but we have, I know it's upside down, but it looks like it'll clear the center line. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, let's drill it all out, and then uh, do a rough cut, and then final cut after the fold. And of course, we gotta put our gusset in to make this super strong. And with a blink of an eye, there we go, rough cut drilled. I'm gonna go ahead and make the gusset, very easy to do. You don't need me to show you. And then we're gonna go ahead, fold it, and finish it up. Gusset is in, and that baby is thicker than your mama. So let's go ahead and we gotta cut out the slots for the QLS, and then uh, do the final cut. Holes are cut, holes are drilled, gusset is on. Now I'm going to fold it over the prop with the X300 Ultra, finish this holster, ship it out, and then go have some lunch outside. Maybe at the lake, because it's beautiful. All right, I need to pat myself on the back here. Check this out. Bam, there it is. Doesn't interfere with the site channel. It tried, but I won, right? And let me put this on. Bada bing, it clears by a red C here. Perfect, all right. So, that is, that's doable. Now, let's map it, cut it, finish it, send it, and it's going to Kentucky.
It's a beautiful thing. Getting hungry though, I'm telling you that right now. I'm doing chicken fajitas and steak fajitas for, for lunch. Leftover from dinner. Alright. Alright, let's cut that out and it's gonna look, let's see here, like this. Oh. And here we are, ready to go, cleaned up, shined up, bada bing, and it is looking beautiful. Although I forgot the mold. Alright, so let's get this together. Oh, I for forgot that. There we go. Helps if I uh, bring everything I need over. All right, throw this on, throw this on. Now, when they put this on, I'm gonna have to open up a couple holes and move some stuff around, but um, yeah, we'll get it to work. But, that right there. Shit, I would just zing right there. Oh, hey, look at that, bam. So that works just like that, and it still fits. Cool. All right. Let's get this in. And let's open up. Oh, gonna need the hardware. All right, let's get this on. What's great about the WRS is you can go as tight as you want and it doesn't mess it up. Look at that. And that didn't protrude. Beautiful. All right, and let's throw in the retention. Oh, those are going to be too big. That was three eighths. These are quarter inch, and these are point four three seven five. Okay, and then. to get this up throw it right there now it's good enough and high enough to clear the optic so just keep that as it is drill this hole don't forget to clean the inside Now, um, forgot the bolts. Jesus. And like I said, the coating on here, thats it's not thread locker on it. It's like when they coat them in like the nitrate or something like that, they just leave it in there. And it's hard to work with. Because unless you're using their lock nuts, it just it doesn't, it doesn't want to work. All right, so we can throw this in like so like that and then this will go on top leaving oh, I don't have a uh, which we call it here but then you'll have that so, so you could put a um, tourniquet or mag holder and it clears the optic so that's what that's for um, so but we're not gonna put that on it just shows you it does fit and, and whatnot and these are the long screws from Safari Land. I make sure I use those on all of them. Strain that up. That. Then let's get, uh, sometimes you have to use their screws. Yep, but I lost the bag for this, so I gotta find that, so. Wait one. 
And here we are. I apparently didn't hit the button to record, but got the hardware in. It is as tight as it can go. There's a good bit of thread locker on there. And that is pretty much it. I have one thing left to do, and that's to modify the hood slightly. I do it on all WRS hoods. The Gen 2s that they come out with now are all cut, but I shave off a little bit right there so you're not really romping on it. Um, and that, again, is the reason why that gusset is there to help stop with the flex. So, um, but let's uh, do this right here, see how this is. That's beautiful, fully adjustable to what they would like as well. They could tighten it up or loosen it up to however they like. But in the meantime, there is a FNX or an FN 545 510 with the X300 level two WRS and it is able to fit this to have uh, extra blocking on it. You can find these on Amazon. You can find them online. They're, uh, they range from like, I think they're in the $30 area. And uh, I am probably going to release my own version. So on that note, I will see you guys in a second actually. And that is a wrap for this build and another video for the tube. So hopefully uh, you guys actually learned uh, a thing or two and you actually saw or learned about that uh, new bracket you could put on. Uh, but like I said, the only drawback is you have to mount the QLS fork further over because it doesn't clear it. Not yet. So um, be patient on that one. I am going to release a longer one and then... We'll be able to do a lot more. So thank you guys for watching. Huge shout out to Holstersmith and KnifeKits.com for providing the material that you see used. Everything you see used here can be purchased from Holstersmith and KnifeKits, except for the flashlight. They didn't have that flashlight, but they do have the um, epoxy version, which I have right here. So technically, everything you see in this video can be found on Holstersmith.com. Tell them I sent you. Make sure you say thank you because they are basically, in my opinion, the best in the industry uh, for getting everything to you and prices and whatnot. So on that note, I'm going to go have lunch. I'm going to feed the pups and then I'm going to build more. And this one is getting packed up and going to Louisville, Kentucky. And I will see you guys on the next one.